Here is the sixth of our harder circular motion questions. This one is quite similar to one that we looked at a little earlier in that there's no diagram, so we'll have to read the question carefully to figure out what type of circular motion is involved. As we look through it, we can see that it is a horizontal circular motion question and that our particle is moving around the inside of a spherical bowl. We've been given the depth below the centre of the bowl. We haven't been given the radius. And we need to figure out what the normal reaction actually is and how long it takes for the particle to complete three whole revolutions. Now the last time we looked at one of these questions, we gave the game away about them. They initially look very nasty, but they are just banked curves. We need to draw a diagram to figure out what the angle of the banking is. So here is my diagram. I have the quarter, the section of the sphere that I'm thinking about. I've marked on the radius, I've marked on how far below the centre of the circle we are, and I've called the actual radius of the circular motion x. I've also marked on the diagram the angle theta, which I'm going to need to know as part of the question. Calculating this is just going to involve Pythagoras and a little bit of basic trigonometry. We know by now that we are going to need to know the sine and cosine of the angle. So if we draw the triangle that's actually interesting in there, Pythagoras tells us that the radius of the circular motion is a proportion of the radius of the actual sphere. And if we think about the triangle, now that we know the three sides of it, it's fairly simple to see that sine is opposite over hypotenuse and cos is adjacent over hypotenuse. So those numbers fall out fairly simply. Let's think about how we're going to use that. Now we've got the radius of the circular motion, that's going to get plugged into um, either v squared over r or omega squared r. Um, we've got to decide which one of those makes more sense to use. Now, given that in the question it's telling us that the time it takes p to complete three revolutions of the circular path is the goal, I reckon when we do the first part, we're actually going to want to use omega squared r. We're going to be using theta for the force diagram. We're going to be using x for omega squared r, because it's going to be omega squared x. And from then on, it should be a relatively standard case of resolving in different directions. And this is exactly what we're doing for the very first part of the question. On the right, we have the force diagram there are only two forces, gravity and the reaction force. And we have omega squared x as the acceleration due to circular motion. Resolve vertically, rearrange, and we get that the reaction force is 4mg. For part b, we want to find what omega is. So the other sensible direction to resolve is towards the centre of the circle. If we do that, we find that we've got, using Newton's second law, mass times acceleration equals the horizontal component of R. There's an awful lot of things we can plug in there, and it's worth uh, making sure that you can see where all the numbers I've put in have come from. An awful lot cancels out, and we end up with omega squared being 4g over R. And we're probably not going to be able to do better than that. We can't get rid of the g and we can't get rid of r. So this is the best possible answer for omega squared. We can't simplify it any further. Now it's very tempting to stop there, but that's not actually what it's asking for. It's not asking for the angular speed, it's asking for how long it takes to complete three revolutions of the circular path. And in order to do this, we need to remember what omega actually tells us. It tells us the speed in radians per second. Now some people are very, very happy with doing all the calculations, but they're not particularly happy with radians. The only thing we need to know here is how far do we have to move? Three revolutions 
is 3 times 2 pi radians, which is 6 pi radians. So we've got a speed, we've got a distance, we just need to use speed as distance over time. If we call t the time that we're looking for, plug everything into the speed equals distance over time formula, and we get this result here. It will take exactly 3 pi times the square root of r over g seconds to complete three revolutions of the circular path. And we've talked before about the fact that we now need to get comfortable with giving answers that have unknowns like this in them. If the question had given us a specific radius, we could actually have given a specific number. But because it hasn't, this is the best possible form of the answer. And that's actually it. For what looked like it was going to be quite a nasty question, we're done. Um, certainly compared to the previous question we looked at, which had an incredible amount of interrelated mathematics, it just involved setting the diagram up and everything fell out incredibly nicely. If we have a look at the key points from it, it really is just a banked curve. So draw a diagram, get the angles, and then resolve horizontally and vertically. The only um, bit about this that we need to consider, that some people sometimes get wrong, is to make sure we can connect up revolutions and radians when we're thinking about angular speed and angular distance. Thank you.